Hello guys, and welcome back to another tutorial. Uh, today what I'm going to be doing is covering how to make that digging machine. Uh, I'm not going to go into details of step-by-step uh, -step on how to create it. Uh, the files and procedures are always in the, um, the download on my website. I also link it to the, the page that usually you can find the download on. So um, other than that, I'm going to basically explain how it functions and not so much how to build it uh, like most of these larger projects that I do. Now, uh, this particular version does have some setbacks and um, I do plan on making a couple different versions of this particular project, but uh, going about it differently in the future. So um, for now, I'm just going to explain uh, the gist of how everything works and then do a kind of like a showcase of what it does in the actual game. So there are um, two states uh, for this particular um, project. There uh, is six rotations uh, for each side as well as two on and off states for the block to mine and not mine. So there is um, a total of uh, 12 different blocks that you'll need. So these are the blocks here. Uh, with that being said, there are four different procedures uh, that um, actually make this particular thing work. So there is one, two, three, four. So these four things here. These three here are for the on state, and that one's for the off state. So if we go into the actual block, um, I'll do my best to explain everything. Now the texturing, you obviously need the texture for the thing. Um, a lot of these settings are irrelevant. You can change this, most of these, uh, the, the main settings uh, to your liking for your mod. Uh, where the actual block function is, is in the procedures itself. So all these things can be changed to your liking. It won't matter. Um, it's not really specific on any particular value in these uh, to make it work. So, um, I've just used rock and some basic uh, very, or settings like hardness and uh, resistance and stuff like that that would be kind of like uh, rock or metal. So uh, for the most part, this doesn't matter. Um, I just configured it to my liking. You can pause the video and copy it out if you want to, or you can just uh, change it to how you want it. Uh, it doesn't have particles, and it doesn't have an inventory or use NBT uh, data. So um, we don't actually use variables. Even if we used variables, it wouldn't uh, work perfectly in this uh, system because it would reset every time it got placed by um, moving it forward. So it, it's not going to work with any types of variables with this uh, rig. So if we go to the next one, uh, we have one right-click event for the off state, and uh, we'll check that out. Now, this is pretty much the same across um, all five. So this is a right-click procedure. Um, every time the player right-clicks the block, it's going to test if the player is holding a piece of charcoal if um, in, the, in the main hand. So if the player is holding a piece of charcoal in the main hand, then it's going to remove the block and place the block uh, for the on state for that rotation in the current location of the actual block that it just removed. So if that's if this is also true, then it's also going to test if the player is in um, or is not in creative mode. So if it's not in creative mode, if it's uh, spec spectator, um, adventure, or uh, survival, then it's going to remove uh, charcoal from the player's inventory. Given that uh, Spectator doesn't actually have an inventory, it will only work on uh, adventure or uh, survival. So moving on, if it's not that particular item that's found in the inventory and, and not in the main hand, so it's going to uh, remove move the block and change the rotation of the block. So that's how that basically works for the um, right clicked uh, for the off state. So if we move next, uh, there isn't any um, uh, generation for the block, so it won't be found naturally in the world either. 
So if we head over to, we covered this one right here. So if we cover the um, drill on state of the same version, uh, we'll go to all the settings again are the same as the um, other, uh, other state. Uh, the only difference in this one is the tick rate is set to 20. Uh, the other um, tick rate uh, for the block rate because um, it wasn't needed to actually be um, updating the block at all. And if you're generally not having using the update tick uh, trigger, you probably want to set this to zero just so it doesn't uh, lag um, the game as much uh, because it constantly updates regardless if it's um, any like not being used on the update tick or anything. So if you're not using the update tick for the procedure, just set this to zero. But in this case, because this is the on version and we're using update tick, I'm gonna set that to 20. 20 is also the same as uh, one second. So uh, there's 26, 20 ticks in a second. So um, calculating this basically makes it a little bit easier to work. So, with that being said, uh, we'll continue to the next. Uh, again, there's no particles, so we don't need to worry about that. No MBT data because it won't work with uh, this uh, particular setup. Uh, we do have a update tick and a right click on block. So we'll start with the right click on block. Uh, this one basically uh, just removes the block and then sets it to its off state. So when we um, have it running, um, what happens is if we need it to stop, we'll right click on it and then it will turn it to the off state of that particular rotation. So that's basically all that one's doing. Uh, this one's a little bit different, it's a little more advanced. Uh, I'll do my best to cover how everything works. So the first thing that it's going to be testing for is if the if there's a block um, at the location where it's going to be mining the blocks from, and if there is obsidian or bedrock in the other version here, it's basically the same code. Um, then it's going to test if any of those blocks or in those particular locations. It just requires one to halt the system. So that's basically what the uh, OR thing does is it's testing if it's at this location or at this location or at this location. Now if I were to set it at, uh, to basically test for AND uh, all these locations, then it would have to be true for all of them. But in our case, we just want to make sure that uh, it will stop if there is at least one block uh, where it's going to be mining. So that's basically all this is done. Uh, you can configure this to any block that you wish. You can make your own block and then configure it into this particular system and it will work perfectly fine. I have a... Uh, I have two set up here. So this other one is for Bedrock. This would probably be a pretty important one to keep uh, just because if it does reach, uh, say, bedrock um, above or below in the nether, then you want it to not breach the actual bedrock. So you probably want this set up like the way it is. But uh, feel free to configure the obsidian one, and that should work fine however you want it to work. But um, if it's true, then what it's going to do is it's going to remove the um, current state of the um, mining block, the on version, and it's going to be uh, setting the, the state to the off version. So it basically stops the block from mining. And down here, uh, these little procedures all along here, including this one, is basically testing if there is lava, flowing, la or flowing lava, lava, flowing water, water, or bubble water, or even cave, um, cave air. And if it's true, then it's going to remove the block um, in that particular location, and then it's going to um, basically test for the other um, locations as well where it's mining. Now it's doing a three by three area, so um, it has to test for a nine grid area for it to mine. So this, these procedures here are basically the mining blocks of the actual um, 
actual machine. So if it's not any of these particular items, then it's just going to uh, mine the block and drop the item onto the, uh, or mine the block and drop it behind the uh, actual drill block. So that's the coordinates where it's going to be dropping it. That's the coordinates where it's going to be mining it from. On. And that's basically the same thing for all these different things. The only difference is it's the different location where it's going to be targeting uh, the block to mine it. So that's all those things right here up to that point. Then the next thing that we want to do is call for a procedure. Now this particular section is optional, but I recommend keeping it in because it makes uh, um, it a little bit easier to collect the items and mine it everything like that. I have a built-in system where it's going to detect these blocks up here and if it's going to um, find it on the sides of the uh, mined out area then it's going to fill it in with cobblestone. So we're basically running an external uh, procedure and calling it into the main procedure that we're using for the update tick. So this one right here is the procedure that we're calling for. And again, um, just to make sure that the um, a lot of different computers can actually run the code and stuff like that without crashing mCrater uh, because it does get laggy if there's too much code in it. Um, I basically just uh, called this particular procedure and all these other ones here to the other main procedure that we're basically telling it to run the script at. So what's going on here is it's going to test for the um, main blocks like the other one. So if there's flowing lava, lava, flowing water, water, bubble water, or cave air. And if that's true at those coordinates, then it's going to basically just place cobblestone in that place. And that does that for all the side blocks um, around the mined out area. So what this is basically doing is just calling um, this procedure and placing it right below here. So that's all that's doing. And uh, then basically all it does is remove the block and place down the, and place down the other block uh, for the new location. So in this case, um, I believe we're working on the back rotation. So it's basically moving it uh, backwards and uh, moving it one block backwards. So it's mining the block. Um, it continues it moving, so it basically pushes it forward. So with that being said, uh, let's hop in game and I'll demonstrate how this all basically works. It's one thing, one thing to basically explain all the different components of it, but it's a different thing to see it actually work. So. We'll hop in game and I'll do my best to explain how everything corresponds with it. Okay, so we're in game and I have uh, all the different um, particular block states uh, that are made in the particular mod. You can disable the creative inventory if you want to. Like I said, the settings are up to you how you want to configure it, but um, the main function is the actual mining feature of it. So we'll start with uh, the off state for uh, drilling down and if we place that right here now we have to remember that the 3x3 three three area is always going to be facing where the white part is so if we place it down here it's going to be mining the floor out and uh, you can also right click on it so it changes the rotation and um, then if you are holding uh, charcoal and then you basically right click on it. Then it will activate the mining sequence and start mining. And if you basically right click on it again, it's gonna stop it from mining because of the right click procedure that we have in place. So uh, with that being said, uh, it's not too much different. If I were to dig all the way down to um, bedrock, then um, there's probably some lava, but I can just demonstrate um, some lava exposure here and I'll show you how it all works. So we'll place down that block again and we'll face it that way and then we'll turn this on and you'll notice that it actually removes the lava as it goes and uh, as you can see it places the uh, the lava or the cobblestone 
where the lava sources are and the flowing lava is. So it basically fills in the area if needed. So that's basically how that works. Um, the only thing need to basically show is in survival. So game mode survival. If we right click on it, it consumes the actual charcoal. So that's basically all it does. It just mines the blocks and um, there isn't any way to control the amount of blocks uh, in this version that it can mine. Uh, there will be an updated version of a tutorial uh, for more control over the actual mining thing. But other than that, hopefully you guys uh, learned something today. If you're new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe, comment down below, rate the video, and I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Peace out.